Thanks, Coach. I appreciate that. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at camp. Make sure you got your tennis shoes on. No, no flip flops on the sidelines. I always harassed him about. Um, I just want to start by obviously saying how thankful and grateful I am to be back into the Big Ten and a part of this. Um, to be representing the University of Wisconsin, our football program, and uh, most importantly, this football team that we have today. It's been, I think, eight months now. Eight months since I've uh, moved to Madison, and I can tell you that everything involved in what I've done in the last eight months has exceeded my expectations. And I know I went into it a little bit blind, not knowing um, all things about Madison and all things about Wisconsin, but I'm talking about from the community, the city, um, the campus, the actual university. I mean, all those things um, in the eight months I've realized and recognized an incredible amount of amazing things that I had no idea about. But I think more than anything over the last eight months, recognizing and seeing and witnessing the culture of young men that we have within our program by far exceeds anything else that I've learned. Um, and for that, I, deserve, I, I must give a lot of recognition to those that have come before me. And uh, to kind of just recognize Coach Alvarez, to Coach Bielema, to Coach, um, to Coach Leonard and, and, and Coach Christ, um, the foundation that those guys had laid and, and had built over time, over the last 20 some years, is really evident and, and it's deep rooted. And to them, I owe a lot uh, for what it is that I'm walking into. Um, so, for that first month, for me, it really was about recognizing and and seeing all the things that uh, that had gone on over the last 20 some years. So it wasn't like come in in that first month and and, and just blow things up and make a splash. As we know, it was the it was the time of um, a bull prep. And I think maybe it was a little bit unique to go in to say, hey, I want to coach and be a part of this bull preparation and all that's going on. But it was really because I knew there were so many amazing things that had been done before me that I had to recognize. So for that first month, I had to take as much time to figure out, you know, in the way that they've prepared, the way that they've practiced, to, to, to the way that they play. I mean, all those things for me in that first month was what it was all about. And then moving forward in the last seven months, it's all about my ability, our ability to embrace what it is that they've done there and what has been laid before us, to recognize the amazing things and to have a, a way to enhance them, but then also to implement the things that we know it's going to take to continue to move our program in this, in this football team to the next level. And so to me, that's what the last seven months have been all about. And I can say now we're one, less than one week away from actually putting that to the test, right? We will find out in less than a week, you know, what that trust, love, and respect that we emphasize within our locker room, what it really looks like. How deep rooted is it really when all of a sudden we begin to do what we came here to do, right? Prepare to play for championships. And that's what's exciting for me. That's what's exciting is to, to recognize this opportunity that's in front of us, how close it is, and now to put your you know, culture and things to a test with all the things that come with camp and the season, right? The human elements, the preparation, the playing time, the winning of games. Um, that's when you find out what you really got. So I, I think I'll just start off by answering a question that I know I've been asked so many times in the last seven months, and I've already been asked it today, you know, the, the, the question that comes down to, hey, define what success looks like in year one, and what are your expectations, right? I mean, it's the pretty common thing. I'm probably take away most questions, right? We have one objective, and that's to play for a championship. I don't think that'll <clears throat> ever change, whether it's year one, year two, three, four, or five. Um, that's what our objective is. And then you'd say, then I'll tell our guys as we start camp here next week that nobody outside of our team, nobody outside of the walls that which the guys that are there every single day that have everything invested will define what success looks like for us. And we cannot allow that. We can't allow fans. We can't allow students. We can't allow former players. We can't allow the media to define what success looks like within our program. But I'll tell you what I think success looks like. Success looks like to me when you play your best ball at the end of the year. 
When you play your best ball at the end of the year, you have an opportunity and we will have an opportunity to play for a championship. But what is playing your best ball at the end of the year take? What takes an incredible amount of consistency? And in year one and with new offenses and new deals, there's, there's a lot of things that have to be done. So the consistency, the ability to grow, right? To grow as individuals, to grow as players, to grow as a team is really critical in, in how the development will happen. And then our ability to handle adversity, which every one of us know, whether it's the start of camp or the start of the season, you're going to, no matter how your season is going, encounter adversity. That's the beauty of this game. How we handle that, how we have the ability to grow, how we have the ability to come together, the way that which we play in those last month of the season will really help me and our program define what it looks like and what it is as we move forward. So we've got three great individual, or young, young players with us here today um, representing our program. Um, it's quite unique that we've got a fifth year guy, we've got a third year guy, and we've got a first year guy. And they epitomize all things it means to be a Badger. And I say that because even the first year guy has embraced all the things just like, like I have. Um, so first we have uh, our third, our, our running back, Braylon Allen, who's in his third year. Uh, he's from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Um, we have uh, Muma John Meta, who's a fifth year graduate linebacker for us, who's from um, Illinois. And then we have Tanner Mordecai, who is obviously a graduate senior from uh, Waco, Texas. Three great individuals that give a depiction of, of you know, our entire program. And you'd say a, a first-year guy gives a depiction of your program. Yeah, we've got a lot of first-year guys within our program, whether they're players or they're coaches. And I think the uniqueness of those guys and how they've come together um, really kind of gives a great depiction of our entire program. So I'll open it up for questions. All right, please get your hands up so, our, so we can get the mic to you. Really? No badger? Oh, here we go. We're up here. Sorry. How did I not know, Tim? Exactly. Hey, Luke, why Wisconsin? You kind of summed it up a little bit there, but why Wisconsin? Because you had other opportunities, at least reportedly, to go elsewhere. Uh, and then number two, what is the imprint you have made to this point, and what is Fickleball all about? <laughs> well, I we could take the whole time on why Wisconsin. I probably have said it, but it, it has a lot to do with being back in the Big Ten. It really does. Uh, it has a lot to do with the respect that I have always had um, playing against and preparing for Wisconsin. Um, understanding and recognizing what the culture, what I assumed the culture was like from afar, felt like something that would be really, really in my wheelhouse. And that's why I said that it's exceeded my expectations just in the way that I believe I fit and we fit in the things that we want to be able to do. But I think there's a quite a uniqueness when you put the family in, involved in it as well. And that has a big part of it. You know, timing has a lot to do with that. But then the ability for my family, our families, the people that have come with us that um, to do what is they want to do and be able to do it with their own kids as well. And then what is whatever you want to call fickle it's not about me we all hopefully we all will understand that it's about the way we can do things together and i think what the ball will look like from us is it doesn't matter whether it's running or throwing the ball it doesn't matter whether it's four wides or packed back in there like maybe the traditional style whether it's a three down or a four down what it looks like is the ability for guys to do things together the ability to feed off of one another, the ability to ultimately, this is a game about toughness and your ability to be physical up front, your ability to win ball games in the fourth quarter. That has a lot to do with a mentality. That has a lot to do with not just how you play the game, but how you train in the game. So I think all those things together was one of the things from afar that I felt like could fit and be a really good natural fit for me walking in the door. And that's what I said, I've, I've been not pleasantly surprised, but I've been really impressed with all, all things that uh, I didn't know. Hey, Luke. Over We're going to stay over here to our left. Jimmy Watkins, Cleveland.com. Uh, we haven't seen it yet, but the quarterback that you grabbed from the portal and the, the offensive coordinator you hired, it seems like you might be changing what has been the, the philosophy at Wisconsin. Why do that? <laughs> Why not? Um, 
I think to the naked eye, to the to the normal fan, to to the kids on campus, to whoever. I mean, I think you're going to yeah, it's going to look different. There's no doubt. You know, whether it's you know, two tight ends, three tight ends, two backs in there that maybe the tradition of what Wisconsin has been and been really successful with, um, to the ability of being able to spread things out a little bit more. I don't think that it was anything to do with hey, let's change what it is that they've done and been really good at, and let's bring in somebody that's going to do something different. It's more about people. And obviously I learned that growing up in the Midwest and from a great former coach as well. It's, it's about people. Um, and when you get the right people together, they understand regardless of who they are labeled to be, you know, whether they're a ground and pound guy, whether they're a, a, an air raid guy, what is the core values to the things that you do? And it might look different, but deep down as you dive into it, it's still going to be about the guys up front. It's still going to be about physicality. It's still going to be about controlling and winning the lines of scrimmage, whether it's offensively or defensively. Um, but the thing that I loved about this opportunity in particular was they never asked about that. It wasn't like, well, what are you going to change or what aren't you going to change or this is what, no, it's we believe in you as a person, we believe in you as a coach, and we believe that you'll do what's best to continue to grow our program and move us forward. And um, so I give a lot of credit to obviously Chris McIntosh who, who believed that and uh, you know the, the people that are around us that we'll figure out you know what exactly it will look like as we continue to grow, um, but the core values won't change. Okay, and we have one final question here to our left. Hey, Coach Steve Hellwagon, Bucknuts, twenty four seven. Congrats on the on Thanks, getting Steve. to the Big Ten. Um, my question: uh, You played for John Cooper, Jim Haycock at Ohio State. Worked with Jim Haycock, and then obviously Jim Tressel, Urban Meyer. Just how did all these different coaches impact and mold you and? What have you borrowed maybe from each of them and to, to kind of, I mean, you're 20 years into this as a, as a college coach and, and a few years now as a head coach. What, uh, what have you borrowed from all the, the people that were your influences? Borrowed, stole, became a part of, I, they're all those things. And I think that those opportunities, those situations have all shaped me. Like I, I was very fortunate to be in one place for a very long time, but really be with three Hall of Fame coaches. You know, from Coach Coop, who I played for, to Coach Tressel, to Coach Meyer, three Hall of Fame coaches that have done it in many different ways. And that's probably the greatest thing that I learned, that there are many different ways to do this. There are many different ways to lead. There are many different ways to win and to, and to grow a program. But it's got to be you. It's got to be authentic. And it's got to be consistent in all those things. And taking things from each and every one of those guys that I was fortunate enough to spend a lot of time with, whether it was five years, six years, 10 years, and five years. I mean, that's a lot of experience. Um, but the, the, the eight or nine months where I had an opportunity to kind of do things on my own really kind of showed me how important the true leadership behind all that we do is. And the failures that I had, especially in those eight or nine months, um, probably as much as those other times with all those guys have, have really helped me be who I am. Um, so I, I think there's a shape and there's a part of all of it and it doesn't, you could come and you could see and you could recognize things from all of them. Um, but I think more than anything that it's, it's the ability to be consistent, it's the ability to, to believe in what it is you're doing and be authentic in everything that you're doing. All right, thank you coach. Good luck in your first season. Appreciate it, thank you.